What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. Today, we're gonna take some cues from AI to create an epic Stormcast Eternals army. Not too long ago, I picked up a really awesome painted Stormcast army on eBay. The paint job is really well done for the style and it got me really wanting to add a ton more models to it so I could once again have a fully themed older model Stormcast army for Warhammer. If you're not entirely familiar with the idea, it's pretty easy to show you what I mean. You pretty much dry brush an army to look like stone, add some magical bits here and there, and in almost no time at all, a pretty decent looking army with a cool theme. The issue I've always had with themed armies is that there really isn't any context for them. Now don't get me wrong, I think it's a really great way to paint an army. It's quick and extremely effective at visual storytelling. But what about the underlying story and how it ties into the overall lore and theme in Warhammer? Literally, the other day, while I was working on this army, I was shown something really, really cool. A patron in the Miniature Rescue's Discord server was playing around with writing some custom backstories for a bunch of his minis, and in turn, those stories were turned into art that showed the kinds of colors that would work for said minis, and all of this was done using OpenAI. On its own, that's really cool, and it's a tool I definitely want to look into more for future paint jobs and custom kit bashing ideas. But for today, I asked ChatGPT, an OpenAI used for optimizing language models for dialogue, to write me a tale of how the Stormcast Eternals became the Stonecast Eternals. In the wake of Sigmar's reclamation of the mortal realms, the Stormcast Eternals had become a stalwart force for order and the salvation of the realms. However, not all was well. Marathi, once a powerful figure in the old world, had risen to new heights of power in the Age of Sigmar. With the aid of her dark sorcery, she sought to turn the Stormcast Eternals into a living stone army under her control. At first, the Stormcast dismissed the rumors of Marathi's plans as the rantings of a mad cultist. But as the days wore on, strange things began to happen. The once vibrant colors of the Stormcast armor faded and dulled, and their flesh became cold and unfeeling. The Stormcast knew something was wrong, but they couldn't quite put their finger on it. It was only when Marathi herself appeared before them that the truth became clear. She had found a way to harness the very magic that animated the Stormcast, twisting it to her own dark ends. One by one, the Stormcast fell under her spell, their bodies transforming into cold, lifeless stone. But even as the last of the Stormcast succumbed to Marathi's dark magic, one remained resident. The Lord Celestine of the Stoneheim Chamber refused to bow to Marathi's will, and with his last ounce of strength, he summoned his fellow Stormcast to resist her control. A great battle ensued, with the Lord Celestine leading the Stone Brethren against Marathi and her minions. In the end, the Lord Celestine fell, his body transformed into stone like his comrades, but even in death, he remained resolute. His sacrifice had given the Stormcast Eternals the chance to break free from Marathi's control, and they fought on with renewed vigor and determination. In the end, they emerged victorious, and the memory of the Lord Celestine and his sacrifice would forever be remembered as a testament to the unbreakable spirit of the Stormcast Eternals. Armed with this short but compelling story, I am determined to take a bunch of older Stormcast models and paint up a 2,000 point army. The first thing I need to do is gather what Stormcast models I currently have built, and see what kind of cool army I can make with them. I happen to have a pretty good variety thanks to a rather large donation the channel received last year. Check that video out if you haven't seen it. So there are a good number of older models to choose from, as well as some of the newer Dominion models. Not to mention the army that I actually just bought too. Now I already have a sweet 2000 point all new Stormcast army that I really like, and I want to keep the generation separate, so anything pre-Dominion will end up going in my Stonecast army, and so on. So right out of the gate, a bunch of these models will be set aside for later. That still leaves a pretty nice selection of models, including a very nice Lord Arcanum on Torallon. It's gonna be our stand-in for that kind of Lord Celestine in the story. In order to get a somewhat playable list here, I went to the Warhammer Army Builder and quickly put together 2000 points using a variety of the models that I have. My main focus was on keeping as many of the models that I already bought in the eBay listing because they're just too good not to use, and that was kind of the original idea for the army anyways. So I entered everything in, and for the most part, it looks like there are some all right synergies within the army. Some fun things to play around with, and a halfway decent size for the table. Now that the army is pretty much solidified, it's time to start working on turning these into stone. 
The first thing we need to do is get everything cleaned up. So the mold lines need to go and missing parts need to be replaced or repaired. All of my judicators are actually missing shoulder pads and for the life of me, I could swear that I had extra ones somewhere, but I just couldn't find them. So it turns out that Stormcast shoulder pads are pretty much non-existent for 3D printing, which is weird to me because there are a billion Space Marine shoulder pads, but none for these guys and they clearly need them. If you happen to know where I can acquire some spicy STLs for these, please let me know down in the comments. I searched every box I own and nothing. So I did the next best thing for Sigmarines. I just used Space Marine shoulders. The only downside is that the older shoulder pads are a little bit small. So I cut them up and kind of flattened them down to fit on the Judicators. It actually doesn't look half bad with all the battle damage and it helps sell the Broken Stone Army look pretty well. So I'm calling that a pretty big win. I would like to mention that I'm using a brand new pair of God Hand clippers for this job. God Hand was kind enough to send me a box of supplies that included these really nice clippers. I'm very used to using the cheap Amazon ones and there's a real big difference between those and actual hobby clippers. They sent me a bunch of other stuff too that I will eventually be working my way through, but in the meantime, if you wanna check out some of their hobby products, I'll have a link in the description below. The models get cleaned up and they're ready for some basing. Some PVA and a quick dip in some beach sand will create nice rocky bases that we'll mostly be covering up anyways. But some of the larger rocks will show through and still look pretty good. This is pretty much my go-to for all bases these days because you can take it in so many directions and sand is pretty much free wherever you live. So take advantage of those free materials. <laughs> The army I purchased has a pretty straightforward muddy texture base and some grass tufts, which is great, but will eventually be covered up with grass and more tufts, so the whole army can match. Still, these look really nice, so I thought I'd mention the great work that the previous owner put in. They also have a ton of really great texture on them, including a good amount of sand and crackle paste. So before we get to any kind of priming, I wanna get a bunch of cracked earth texture all over these models. The key is to find nice flat spots where the paste can be put on pretty thick. When it starts to dry, it'll break apart and make large enough cracks that will get picked up when we get to dry brushing. After all the bases and cracking has dried, it's time to prime these minis and get to painting. Thinking back on it now, I probably should have done a light coat of primer on the eBay models as well just to keep everything a little more consistent, but I really didn't want to lose that nice finished look that all these models had. So I primed the new ones and the goal will be to make them look, you know, relatively similar by the end. The first step though will be dry brushing all of the new ones to look like stone. Oh yeah, and if this video didn't have enough random stuff in it already, Redgrass Games sent me their new desk lamp that will be heading to Kickstarter very soon. I got a review copy and just set it up for this project. I wanna use it for a little bit before I really talk about it in earnest, but so far, it's actually been pretty nice to have. All right, first model up on deck. I like to use three colors for dry brushing stone. The first layer that goes down is a really heavy dry brush of a darker gray, something that we can cover the entire model with and only leave a little bit of that black showing in the recesses. It's best to start by dry brushing in a circular motion so you can hit every part of the model. It catches every edge from every angle and keeps the dry brushing really even. The second color is a little bit lighter and mainly focuses on the flat surfaces. Using the same circular movement to get the most coverage, but applying less pressure into the recesses. And finally, I like to do a downstroke only dry brush to pick up the raised details with the lightest gray. This can also be used to create focal points like on the face or weapons by going over those areas multiple times, or using that circular motion in those areas. However you like to do it, dry brushing is a great way to create tons of depth really quickly and to get a ton of minis painted all at once. So I sat back and did this on the rest of the models for the army. It's a satisfying process and doesn't take too much time. And I really like that when it comes to painting full armies, especially in a quick amount of time. Of course, this isn't for everyone, and that's totally fine. Having a living stone army is a pretty specific thing, but this is also a great way to set up an entire army for speed painting as well. Getting those dry brush layers on and having an army sitting on the table ready for some contrast or speed paints is a huge step towards finishing an army quicker, slap chop and done. 
Because I want to unify the army I bought off of eBay and the other models I'm adding to that army, I decided to use some oils to bring some colors to the model. Covering each model with a variety of colors that look good with stone will go a long way towards making them feel like they were all painted at the same time. I mixed up a yellow brown, burnt umber, dark green, and teal. For the most part, I want to marry the burnt umber with some of that dark green. That'll bring out a lot of detail and look like dirt and moss. The yellow brown was supposed to be a kind of sepia look, but after using it on one model, I just decided to abandon it, so not going to be using that color. The teal brings in a little bit of that verdigris color that you sometimes see on stone that has a bunch of metal in it. The metals are corroding and the teal is just leaking out of the cracks. And since this is a previously metal army turned to stone, I like the idea that there's a mix of weathering in there. It also brings in a lot of nice color to pretty lifeless models. Gray isn't exactly a poppin' color for an army, generally. Once those oils are dry, I'm gonna hit everything with a good coat of matte varnish to really make everything look really dry and dusty. It'll also lock in all the layers and protect everything during gameplay, so it's a nice two-for-one step. The final piece for an army like this is to bring in basing and let some of that grass grow onto each model. Now I've tried all sorts of scale moss and little pieces of plant life to make this work, and in the end, I just find that really short static grass just gives the best look. I have a bunch of basing materials on hand to give it some variety, but the base material is a mix of brighter and darker static grass with some little bits of scale flowers mixed in. Using PVA, I'm going to coat the bases in any area on the models where I think grass and moss would have taken over, and sprinkle my static grass onto everything. Then I'll dab on little bits of glue to add more grass tufts and flowers all over the base and model. I even have a nice amount of ivy that goes on a few of the stones. It's small, but it feels like a nice touch and does give the base more variety. Now this is a pretty good place to stop, but I'd like my magic stones to have a little magic to them. So I opted for some airbrushing to bring that out. If there are any little parts to stand out on each model, then I shoot them with some light blue. Just enough to cover the piece and a little bit of the surrounding area. This gives the model a nice glowy look and contrasts nicely with all of the other colors we have on the model. I also like the idea that taking from that story where they kind of came back alive, that somehow they're kind of glowing from within, like it's, it's coming out of the cracks almost, that they're still alive underneath the stone. It's really cool. To top that off, a little bit of white in the middle to really sell that glow. What I find really fascinating is how well the AI was able to take a simple idea and expand on it. I only fed it a little bit of information, like just enough to get going, and what I got in return was just so good that I wanted to make a full army. It makes me wonder how far I could take this idea in the future. Could ChatGPT write a campaign for me? Could it give me special rules and objectives? The possibilities of this kind of technology are just fascinating, and I think we're gearing up for something that could actually change the way that we hobby. And I don't mean to be dramatic, but think about it. If AI can write me a one-page story that justifies an entire army, at least for me, what kinds of things could it come up with in terms of actual gameplay? Super custom, one-of-a-kind adventures and stories that incorporate our personal hobby and something that can keep up with the changes of those stories as we create them. It can iterate and iterate on each new development and keep going indefinitely, theoretically. I guess I'm just excited about the future possibilities and what that could actually look like. With or without it, this project was really fun and not too difficult. And in the end, I got a sweet 2000 point army that I can play right away. And if there are any other models that I want to add to it or even change out completely, it's easy enough to dry brush on a few colors and have a new edition ready to go the same day I get the model. A lot of us have purchased armies and haven't touched a single box in years. Turning something like that into a themed army is a great way to go and gets those models onto the table. And if you need a little bit of story to justify that, AI can be a great tool to help make that a reality. So maybe give that a thought. Find an old box, write a little bit of story, and see what happens. Thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you 
in the next video. And of course, here is the finished Stonecast Eternals army. Thanks again.